Hi, I'm Kate Verano. Welcome to the world of Zwift. Well, hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, where we unpack everything you've ever wanted to know about Zwift and wrap it up in the most enjoyable, unspecified amount of time you'll spend on YouTube this week. I give you the OJ Borge no money back guarantee for that bad boy. Let us see what we've got on the show this week. It's race week one in the ZRL. Dave Toll joins me to talk about all of the action. We've got more A to Zwift. Kristin Armstrong is back to answer your questions in Coach's Corner. Jess Pratt takes us on a pro rider recon. We show you how to get involved in the Tour of Utopia. And I'm back in the feed zone to taste test your indoor ride fuel suggestions. Please, please, please be kind. It's that time where I ask you to get involved with us here at the World of Zwift. Like, comment, hit the notification bell and subscribe. And to make it easier this week, I'm going to channel my inner Hufflepuff and conjure up the subscribe button. First, I need to get my magic wand. Here it is, here it is. Ah! I've got it, there we go. Right, let's get this subscribe button on screen. There we go. All you need to have to do now is click this button. It's as easy as that and I shall wait. Keep the magic flowing through me, flowing through me. There we go, done, excellent. Right, let's get this show on the road. There's been plenty going on this week in the world of Zwift. The Zero was back this week and season three, well, it kicked off with a bang. Across multiple countries, time zones and setups, thousands of you got involved. Over 1,800 teams featured on race day one over in Douce France, which is a massive number. Stay tuned as the ZRL is only going to get bigger and better. We all know how the Zwift Racing League works. Well, now we have a running league for all you jogging fans out there. Could be jogging, might be jogging. I'm not sure if it's a soft J or not. Anyway, the series will run for six weeks from the 16th of April and runners from around the globe will be able to get involved every Friday. It'll comprise of two types of races, cross country and relay. So all of you runners out there, get yourself over to the website to get your team signed up now. Australian triathlon brand Two Times You have joined up with Zwift to create an exciting and engaging six-week training series. Each week will be curated by a different Two Times You athlete with rides, workouts and live Q&A sessions. And remember, if you find it hard to type and work out at the same time, which I do, mash the keyboard, all you need to do is fire your questions over with voice dictation. Easy! Well-known sports company Decathlon are currently changing the lives of six prison inmates through Zwift. They've made a short movie all about their brand new Zwift esports team who are all currently competing from behind bars. The initiative is aimed at helping to reform these prisoners' lives by getting them to get involved in a team event all on Zwift. And finally, our favourite Zwift podcast, It Is Back. And this week, the Power Up podcast hosts one of the standout Zwift community riders. That is Rachel Elliott. Unfortunately, Rachel had a stroke a few years ago, but she's battled back to almost perfect health and she's an absolutely incredible rider. So tune in to hear her story. We are three weeks into the double XP heaven that is the Tour of Watope. And I tell you what, you have flocked in huge numbers to grab those precious points. Here is what you can expect this week on the Tour. And whilst you watch, I'm just going to go and complete stage two. Enjoy. It's stage four of the Tour of Watopia this week, and it's time to get double dirty. Three courses to choose from, double the XP for every mile or kilometre you ride, and all with a jungle flavour. For Group A on the longer ride, you'll take on the Big Loop, 42.4 kilometres long and 651 metres in elevation. First you'll climb the epic KOM and then descend deep into the trees to take on the jungle circuit. For groups B and D, it's the newest route in the jungle for your 26.7 km adventure, the Serpentine 8, where you'll find yourself zigzagging through the Mayan temples along the new Mayan Bridge Road. And if you're riding in Group C, you'll be on Road to Ruins. Starting in the jungle pens, you'll cover the jungle circuit, ride along the volcano flat and finish back in downtown to total over 30 kilometres of mixed surface fun. Whichever route you choose, bike choice will be something to consider. Mountain bike, gravel bike or even a bike change as you go from road to dirt, the decision is yours. Sprinting for top 200 there. 
Oh my word, I've never ridden it so quickly. Legs of fire. And for me, that is the second stage of the Tour of Utopia completed. If you've missed the first two stages, don't worry, there's still three more to go. And there's a makeup week between the 23rd and the 29th of April. Man, my eyes are stinging ah, from the sweat. Now though, I need to get someone to hose me down and get back in the studio. Nurse! Ah, it's that time again where food is not so much fuel, but more a smorgasbord of disgusting suggestions from you, our wonderful viewers of the world of Zwift. And this week, your suggestions have been interesting to say the least. Someone who sounds like they're straight out of Peaky Blinders, or for Bridges, kindly suggested something that even he wouldn't try, ketchup on garlic bread. But Arthur, that's basically pizza. It's something that I lived on while I was a student. So I'm not going to try that, only because I've done it so much in the past. Chris Hyam, well, he got in touch with something, well, he wanted to torture me, let's put it like that, with a strange food combo. 20 Scotch bonnet chilies with melted chocolate on. No thank you, that sounds pretty horrifying and like I'd be tasting it for a week to go by. But if you want to show us how you eat it, Chris, by sending a video, then I will then give it a go. This week, we decided to go with A.M. Westgate's idea, as it's something you couldn't have for outdoor riding. Now it is Kraft Mac and Cheese with ketchup. Now just look at that. It looks like something out of a, a B-movie special effects department when they ran out of money. Not judging, merely observing. And I have to say that I am salivating at the idea of this. So fork in hand, white shirt on, possibly a bad choice. Let's dig in. Get a big old, I think if you're going to do this, you've got to really, really go for it. Let's load up this fork with a big old platoon of macaroni with a bit of ketchup on top. Mmm. And this week, sorry for eating with my mouth on, I've decided to add an extra layer to my review process and ASMR check. So, here we go. If you'd like me to meet your mother and eat like that, I'm available for bookings. So keep sending in your indoor ride fuel suggestions for the feed zone and it could be in my mouth before you know it. Time for everyone to get their copybooks out for their favourite weekly lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's A to Zwift. X is for XP or experience points. Every time you ride on Zwift, you earn XP. And earning XP helps you level up which in turn helps you unlock routes, kits, frames, shades, and wheels. Sweet, right? If you're looking to level up fast, there are tons of ways to help you earn more XP. So listen closely. Every time you complete a new route, you earn XP. Every time you complete a workout block, you earn XP. If you ride with a pace partner, you can earn more XP. Pick up the plus sign power-ups, more XP. If you achieve an in-game badge, you guessed it, more XP. And if you're looking for a way to get a lot of XP fast, then Tour of Watopia, with its double XP for every ride is a surefire hit. Ride each course as many times as you like and pile on those XP. Who knows, you might surprise yourself with how quickly you level up. Stick around because coming up, we've still got all the action and reaction from round one of the ZRL. You've been in the comments asking more training-based questions, and guess what? I've used my extensive cycling hookups to get Chris and Armstrong back in the coach's corner to answer all of your queries. Hi, everyone. It's Chris and Armstrong here, back with Coach's Corner and the world is with. I'm so excited to answer more questions from our viewers and listeners this week. So first question up. What do you think the best strategy is for a time trial? Do you want a negative split? Do you want a steady pace? Do you want a strong start and finish? Number one, let's talk about just the course in general. Use landmarks, use terrain to break up the course. This is gonna help you mentally, which is a huge part of the individual time trial. So secondly, you wanna train your time trial in the right zones, so that if you do go out too hard in a time trial, that you can recover from that. Force your body to adapt, to undulations. You have to train specifically for the course that you're trying to focus on. Looking for the over-unders, looking for blocks of threshold that are above 
I would say 100 to 106% of that threshold is gonna get you ready for that time trial. All right, final question for the week here. Hi, Kristen, I have read that you have an arthritic hip. I would appreciate any advice on how you deal with this condition. I'm a 61 year old and has suffered with severe arthritis in my left hip for several years now. My problem is that I have a difficult time generating power while in the saddle. And I spend probably too much time out of the saddle. And as for strength, I find the only thing that works for my lower body is to be on the bike. So some of the things that I would uh, recommend is number one, activate prior to your ride, glutes, hamstrings, lower back, core. It's all about engagement. Make sure your bike fit is set up, that you're as open as possible with those hip flexors. And that might mean rising that front end. And thirdly, make sure you finish your, your ride the same way you started, which is with a great activation and mobility program. Thank you so much. Wishing all of you the best. And please send in your questions. I love answering those questions from all of our listeners and viewers. Until next time. Keep posting those questions in the comments and we'll get one of our expert coaches to answer them on the show for you. It was all systems go for race one of the ZRL. Let's take a look at how the men got on. Welcome back to season three of the Zwift Racing League. It is a team time trial. 24K today, 133 meters of climbing. Beast mode powered by a Rose uh, team. This is our first view of the Movistar Esports team. This is team Swedish Zwifters here. They might be down to four here. Restart are already looking at the power here. Team drop. The men in red. Swift Warrior Cycle. Kalas, a real mighty strong team. Legion of Los Angeles. Looks like they've actually lost Sam Bourbon, so not a great start. Canyon, all five riders together. They are hitting very, very high speeds. The Zwift Warriors coming in. The big question is, Dave, what can Canyon do here? And it's Kirkmare who have taken the win by only three seconds from draft. Saris in the pros closet in third place, but look how closely packed these teams were. Wild, wild way to start week one of eight here for the ZRL. And if that wasn't enough for you, we've got all the action from the women's race. Season three of the Zwift Racing League. It is a team time trial. The women are going to be riding on exactly the same course as the men. Team Hino are actually kicking things off. The runners up last year. I race like a girl. Can they try and uh, you know steal the dominance of Hino? Nice formation here from Saras and the Pros Closet. We've only got three starters, in fact, for the Kiss Racing Team. Hino racing with nine minutes and 30 seconds. Canyon Esports, only six seconds adrift. Hino race team five strong. This is a superb performance by Canyon Esports. Team Beast Mode. Aeonian across the line, very, very close behind to KISS Racing Team. TFC down to three. Movistar have overtaken Vision E Racing. Wonderful ride there by Turbo as they cross the line. Hino Racing, well, they have done it again. They have a 17 race unbroken run of winning. Canyon Esports, a very solid performance by them in second. I race like a girl with a 32-35. Starting season three with a bang. Time to talk to one of the voices now of the ZRL. That is Dave Toll. Dave, great to have you with us, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me, OJ. We had an incredible first day of racing. Uh, wow, season three is lit. 
We kicked off with a TT this season, Dave, which is very exciting. It, yeah, it really was. There were a lot of question marks, and we answered about half of them. I would say that uh, Hino is Hino again, but Canyon came back. I mean, they're sitting now in that range of, I call it within shouting distance. So that's going to be interesting to see what happens there. And then with the men, oh my, it was scintillating out there. And we saw, you know, Kirk Myers had some good team time trials in the past. Well, they uncorked one, a real beauty out there and then draft racing they turned a lot of heads with their ride uh, so it was exciting to see some new teams some new names and uh the usual suspects were all right there it's set up for what's going to be an incredible next seven races of season three for the zrl well let's talk about the men's first did you see many teams that look like they've worked on their tt in, in the men's the team time train because it's so important the technique you know, OJ, I would say that Team Draft really stood out to me as, as a ride in the men's that they have been doing their homework and it paid off in a major way. They were always good in the team time trial, but this was a next level effort for sure. My heart goes out to the teams like Movistar as they really, I mean, that team just formed as that process, uh, that scheme has only been going on for the last month. So now we can see that they're going to, uh, they have some work to do, but they've got a lot of room to grow. They've brought some talented riders onto that program. And certainly uh, I'm going to expect them to start climbing that ladder and end up as one of our top five teams week in, week out. I mean, it was Deuce France. We knew what it was like. In commentary, you said that the race was going to be won or lost on that climb up to the aqueduct. Was that played out? Did we see the teams that went the fastest up there come out with the best times? Yeah, we did. I mean, it was the teams that yes, set an aggressive schedule out there, and that was clearly Kirk Meyer. This is a team. It's a, a Austrian-German squad. But interestingly enough, the namesake for the team, Stefan Kirk Meyer, wasn't with the team during season two. Now that he's with them, it seemed like uh, there was an extra level of motivation and they really uh, poured it on on that aqueduct climb. Well, that's the men's first race. Very much interesting. Let's take a look at the final places right now. Now let's talk about the women's, Dave. Um, Hino, I mean, back in familiar territory where they left off, not just in season one, but in season two as well. Not just out in front by a bit, but it's strong, strong winners of that first round. Yeah, I mean, to call them the gold standard is underselling them, to tell you the truth. When you look at the technique, the execution, and I think really, OJ, the secret sauce for Hino, I'm realizing, is these women love each other and they love what they do. And it really, really shows. Uh, mm. Their commitment is insane. And when you look at the, the technique that they were able to use throughout the 24K yesterday, it was an absolute clinic. I, I think the other teams have to look at this and really, right now, not be discouraged, but say, that is something that we can aspire to try to do ourselves. But the one, again, that secret ingredient of loving what you do it really shows with that team. Their passion for team time trialing is unrivaled. This is the greatest esports team that we have ever seen, men or women. Uh, I just want to talk about the technical ability of Hino because we've actually got some pictures which we can show here, which goes to show you how much they work the draft, how great their technique is. Dave, talk us through this and why Hino are the team that everyone should be looking at. This is the sweet science of team time trialing. Honestly, as I said, it's a clinic when you look at the way that they're able to ramp up their speed smoothly, the way that they, every rider is able to take a pull. That might be one of the th luxuries that Hino has. It's not only are these women well drilled and committed, but they're also very much at the same high level of ability. So there is no passenger in the Hino train. It's nothing but pure locomotive. We started with a team time trial. We go into a points race next week. It's the Beach Island Loop. What are we going to see next week, do you think, Dave? How do you think the racing's going to change? A sprint. Everybody would really be uh, in that group that you would call a puncher or a climber, basically. But what we're looking for is the best sprinter out of that group. And I can't wait to see who it is. It should be a relatively large group going to the line, although with the exciting new bonus point stru structure that we have, it's entirely possible that we see in season three a whole different style of racing. And the other thing to remember is the, the women's teams now. If you want to beat Hino, 
you're going to have to come out of left field. So it wasn't just the Premier Division and the elites that kicked off. It was also the community divisions all across the planet, all divisions, all racing on the same day, Dave. Yeah, one of my favorite things is just seeing on social media how much the ZRL means to folks. And you're absolutely right. All the way from uh, D-level racers to the super competitive A's. And I think one of the things that they and the community should take some inspiration off of was seeing the team that did get promoted more than holding their own out there. So there's definitely something to look forward to. And it's so great to see people connecting with this. Just awesome. Dave Toll, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, OJ. Next up for the ZRL is the first points race of the season, which I am very excited about. And the riders will be racing the Beach Island Loop for the very first time. So I sent former ZA champion and current pro rider Jess Pratt on her recon of the course. Hey, I'm Jess Pratt and welcome to my rider recon of the Beach Island Loop. So the Beach Island Loop is 12.8 kilometres with only 48 metres of elevation gain, so very flat and fast. Straight out of the pens and we immediately start with an uphill. Only 2-3% to gradient, but you need to make sure you're warmed up. Once we crest the first little drag, the course is relatively uneventful for the first few kilometres. Due to the unpredictable nature of the course, you want to make sure you're conserving energy at the start. 4.4k in, and we're nearing the main little kicker of the course. This short first little kicker maxes out at a gradient of 5%. Nothing crazy, but in combination with being on dirt, it adds to the challenge. It's what comes immediately after this kicker that's going to be important. As you crest this first little climb, the intermediate sprint looms. This may provide a good opportunity for somebody to go from the bottom of the climb all the way to the immediate sprint line. So over the top of the climb now, and immediately you begin to think how you can win this intermediate sprint. Is somebody already off the front, or is it gonna be a bunch kick? 200 meters to go, and it's been a, it's a flat and fast intermediate sprint. But in combination with the little kicker before, it's gonna burn the legs. Immediately after that sprint, we take a right hand turn to a flat and fast piece of tarmac. That last little kicker in the intermediate sprint is nothing too crazy. But with three laps in the ZRL race, you'll be feeling the burn in your legs. With only a few kilometres to go, we exit the underwater tunnel. Only 2-3% to in gradient, but definitely a place for the opportunists. A solid bout of 2 minute max power could see you the win here. But for the sprinters, sitting and conserving will be the way to go. Only short, but if you're not paying attention, this little kicker could be the end of your race. Once we've rested this final climb, it's full focus to the finish. Nearing the final kilometre, we take a sharp right hander. For the sprinters, positioning will be key here. But maybe there's a sneaky opportunist that's jumped off the front. 200 metres to go and it's full gas to the finish. The upcoming ZRL race will feature three laps of this exciting loop. I think it's going to be one for the sprinters. With only 48 metres elevation gain, it's nothing too crazy. Although with some of those dirt sections in there and the intermediate sprint placing, it's definitely going to be an unpredictable race. Conserving and maybe a little bit of luck is going to be key to winning this sprint finish. Ah. That's it for the show, and that means it's time now for you to get involved, whether that be training, racing, or mopping up the double XP on the Tour for Topia. Wherever it is, have fun, and until then, ride on.